Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome to Kids Connection. My name is Audrey Zorik, director of Kids Connection here at Vallejo Drive Church, a place where we learn how to connect with each other and with God through activities, songs, and Bible stories. If you are a regular, I want to welcome you back. And if this is your first time, I want to let you know that we have this program every single Sabbath. It's a new program where we have different activities and we learn about Jesus and how to connect with God in a different way. So come back, visit us, and I hope to see you again. Now, have you seen all the smoke outside? Have you smelled all the smoke? Whoa, it is crazy outside. It has been like this for several days now. California, we have so many fires in California. Forests are burning and we have the firefighters who are out there protecting and trying to put out those fires. We want to pray for the firefighters today. So remember in your prayers to pray for the firefighters for their safety. Ask mom and dad to pray for them because they are out there trying to put those fires. And the, the least we can do is to pray for them Pray that God keep them safe. And thank you all the firefighters, the first responders who are out there protecting us. Not only them, but we also want to thank all the nurses and doctors from our church and the ones who are not from our church but are out there fighting this coronavirus and helping people get well. We want to thank them as they continue to fight this disease. But all our frontliners, if your mom, dad, or if you know anybody who is fighting this disease, this disease don't forget to thank them, okay? Pray for them, thank them, and let them know that we are praying for them too. Speaking about doing something like the first responders, the firefighters, the nurses, the doctors, this week I did something that I normally don't do. As you can see, I'm wearing my kindness t-shirt. Do you guys remember this t-shirt? is when we went to give out blankets to the homeless last year. It was November of 2019. I had this t-shirt on and we were giving out blankets because it was an act of kindness. Okay, it's a t-shirt from the church. You remember this, right? Well, this week I did an act of kindness that I normally don't do. You know what I did? Along with uh, several people from the church, a couple of Kids Connection teachers as well. We came out to the church and we donated blood to the Red Cross. I think I still have, yep, I can still see it right there. I donated blood this week. And I am, and I hope that with this, the blood that I donated, is go it's going to help other people who are in need of blood out there to survive. So I want to thank all the people that came out to the church this week, including Miss Marina came out, Miss Patty came out, teacher uh, Robert came out. All of us donated blood and helped the cause with the Red Cross donating blood. So thank you everyone. And that's why I'm wearing my kindness t-shirt today because of the act of kindness that I did this week. All right. So now let's get our program started. I'm going to invite all the boys and girls to stand up, get ready where you are, and let's sing our song of the day together. And we'll see what th this has to do with our program today. Because no matter what I am facing, Jesus is with me. Let's sing our song of the day together. Woke up this morning feeling kind of blue A little sad but I know just what to do Whoa, oh, 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 oh I have learned that I can go to Jesus He lifts me up whenever I need it Whoa, oh
gives me joy in every situation Keeps my spirits high no matter what I'm facing Now I'd like to invite you to bow your heads, close your eyes, so we can talk to Jesus. Dear Jesus, thank you so much because you are our God and because you love us. Thank you for another Kids Connection program. We ask that you be with us as we worship your name today, as we learn more about you. Be with all the firefighters that are fighting the fires out there in the mountains. Be with all the nurses and doctors who are frontliners fighting this disease. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, now let me ask you something. Um, in today's missionary story, we're going to hear a story about a man. A man who loved sharing the love of Jesus and sharing Jesus to other people. And one day, he met a man on the street that shines shoes. Have you seen anybody shining shoes? No? Ask mom and dad because I'm sure that mom and dad knows what I'm talking about. There are some people that shine shoes on the streets and they make money. They charge people to shine their shoes so everyone can have a beautiful shoe that is clean and either tennis shoes or, or, or your dress up shoes. So this man was shining shoes on the street and someone shared God with him. Let's watch our missionary story and see what happened. Yulian could barely feed himself from the money he earned shining shoes. He set up every day along a busy walking street in Nicosia, Cyprus. Most of his money went to buy cigarettes and alcohol. A decade earlier, Yulian had immigrated to Cyprus from Bulgaria to look for a job. One day, Philip, a global mission pioneer also from Bulgaria, walked by and greeted Yulian, asking if he needed any help. Yulian was surprised. No one had asked him such a question in a long time. It was nice to hear someone taking an interest in him and speaking his native language. But Yulian didn't answer the question and just offered him a shoe shine. While Yulian shined his shoes, Philip told him that Jesus loves each one of us, no matter what situation we're in. The mention of Jesus grabbed Yulian's attention. The next day, Philip returned and asked again if Yulian needed any help. Yulian was surprised that the stranger had returned. This time, Philip didn't need a shoe shine, so they just talked for a while and looked through the books that he brought. This became a routine. Sometimes, Philip read the Bible to Yulian, and eventually, the shoe shiner opened up about how he'd worked in construction after arriving with his family in Cyprus. He lost his job and was kicked out of his home for drinking his family and friends had rejected him. One day, Yulian led his new friend to the abandoned building where he slept. His bed was a hard floor. The sight brought tears to Philip's eyes, and they prayed together on the street. Yulian felt valued and felt God's love through the pioneer's actions. It was at that point that he gave his life to God. Although he'd drunk and smoked heavily for 35 years, Yulian decided to give up alcohol and tobacco that day. His family welcomed him back home, and now he tells everyone who will listen about his love for God. Philip regularly leads a Bulgarian language Bible study. Over three years, eight people had been baptized through Philip's work, a significant number for a country where the Adventist church has only about 100 members in a population of more than one million. He often spends his time mingling with people, getting to know them where they are. Please pray for pioneers like Philip, who are sharing a message of hope with their communities. Thank you for supporting Global Mission. Let's continue to help the missionaries with our prayers and our offerings so they can continue to help and to share the love of Jesus with other people out there. Thank you so much for your support. Now today, I'm going to play another game with you guys. Yes, it's a game. Do you have a ball at home? Do you have a ball? Yes. Do you see what I have back here? I have my own version of basketball hoop. And this is not a basketball, but this is the ball that I had today. So it doesn't have to be a basketball. It doesn't have to be a hoop. You can have an empty trash can, make sure it's clean. 
okay? And I want you guys to play a little game. But first, let me show you what we're gonna do. I have on the table here, because so you guys can see it, but I have a trash can. It's empty. Here we go. It's empty. And I'm gonna come all the way to the trash can and take three steps back, okay? One, two, three. I am all the way out here. Now, I am going to shoot 10 times the basket. Let's see how many times I can make the ball inside of the trash can as my basketball hoop, okay? Let's see how many times I am going to hit it in and how many times I'm going to miss. And I want you guys to do the same thing at home. Find a trash can and try 10 times and see how many times you hit the basket or you score inside the, the bucket and how many times you miss, all right? So here we go, three steps back, I'm right here. Are you ready? With me, here we go. One, two, and one, in. All right, let's go for second. And this is my spot right here. Here we go. Two, in. You, how many do you think I'm gonna hit it in? How many? Everyone? I'm gonna miss one, I'm gonna miss two. Let's see. Three, in. Let's, let's continue. That's three, in. Here we go, four. Four, I almost missed this one, but it's four and I hit it in. Here we go again. Oh, five, I missed one. Let me get the ball here. Five and I missed one. Here we go again, three steps back. Six, but I missed one. Here we go, one more time. Seven and I missed one. Here we go again, almost there, three more. Oh no, I missed. Hold on, let me get the ball. Here we go again. So eight, I missed two. Ready? Again. Nine, and I missed two. One more, one more time, one more time. Here we go, last one. And I missed. Out of 10, I missed three. But I scored seven times. I made seven shots in the bucket. I wanna know and I wanna see how many can you make it? Can you make all 10? Remember, three big steps. One, two, three, and you shoot. I wanna see how many you can make it in. Send me an email, vdkidsconnection at gmail.com and let me know how many you made it in. I also wanna know if you guessed it that I was gonna miss three. So I missed three, but I made seven. Huh, I wonder why I missed three. I wonder why I only made seven in the bucket. Hmm, do you think, uh, do you think that I can make all 10? I think I can make all 10, but wait, not now. You know why? Because I haven't practiced. I haven't had enough practice to make the ball in all 10 times. This is actually the first time that I'm doing this and I'm trying from this distance here. But you know what? I am 100% sure that if I practice all week and I come back next Sabbath and I try it again, do you think I'm gonna get more shots in? I think I'm gonna get more shots in the more I practice, don't you? Why? Because when you practice, you get better at what you do, right? So if you try and you make only one or you make two or you make five or seven or six, whatever you make, if you want to get better, you have to keep practicing so you get better at what you do. I'm going to tell you a story about a man. His name is Dave Hopla. Do you know who Dave Hopla is? Ask mom and dad if they know who Dave Hopla is. Maybe someone who really likes basketball will know who Dave Hopla is. Well, let me tell you, 
Dave Hopla is a person that he is a basketball hoop coach. What do you mean by that? He's not a basketball coach to everyone in every game. He is a hoop. It means that he teaches you how to shoot and make it in and get better at what you do. One of the things that Dave Hopla said in one of the interviews is that when they ask him, how are you so good at shooting hoops? You know what he said? He said, because I practice a lot. Dave Hopla is so good at shooting hoops with a basketball that one time he made 1,234 hoops without missing a single one. Whoa, that's a lot of hoops. Imagine over a thousand hoops. One, two, I did 10 and I almost got tired and I missed three. He took 1,234 and he didn't miss a single one. And then he missed the 1,300, 235. That's when he missed. But imagine a person that shoots that many hoops without missing. And Dave Hopla is the guy that tells us that he practice every day to shoot hoops. And he teaches people how to shoot hoops and how to get better. Professional players, he teaches them how to shoot hoop and shoot right, how to get it right. Dave Hopla makes 98% of his shots. That means that every 100 shots, he makes 98 shots in and he misses two. That's a huge percentage. I wouldn't do that. I, I, I miss 30% of my shots when I was doing this right now. That's because I missed three out of 10. But practice, practice, practice. Be persistent. If you don't get it right the first time, you try it again and you keep practicing until you get better. When mom and dad ask you to do something at home, do you get upset? Are you complaining because you don't want to do it? Do you think that makes mom and dad feel happy? What do you think? And do you think that if you practice more, would you be better at what you do at home? Today's story in our lesson with our teacher we are gonna hear about we're gonna hear a, a story about how she was rewarded by working hard when you work hard getting the baskets your reward is that you're gonna get better and you're gonna make all 10 baskets in at one point let's see what happened and how she was rewarded as she was persistent in doing what she was doing and no matter what she was facing, she was persistent. No matter what you're facing, remember to always ask Jesus to help you get better in what, at what you're doing. Be persistent. Let's sing our song of the day one more time. And no matter what I'm facing. Woke up this morning feeling kind of blue A little sad but I know just what to do Oh, 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 oh I have learned that I can go to Jesus He lifts me up whenever I need it Oh, oh
Thank you for singing with us. Now let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for this program. Thank you because you are with us. And thank you because you help us to get better at what we do. Help us to be persistent and help us to get better at what we do and never give up. We know that you are with us. We know that you will, you will protect us. Be with all the boys and girls. Protect them at home from this virus, as well as all the firefighters and all the nurses and all the doctors that are responding to this emergency out there. Be with them. Keep them safe. Protect them. And Jesus, come back soon so we can go to heaven and live with you without problems where we won't have fires and, and viruses and, and problems anymore. Thank you for answering our prayer and for being our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for being a part of another Kids Connection program. Don't forget that this afternoon is the second Sabbath of the month. So we have our Parents Connection. Tell mom and dad, mom and dad, go meet other parents on our Parents Connection Zoom this afternoon. It happens this afternoon. So don't forget that tomorrow we have our kid to kid zoom games again we come back remember last week we took a we took a break because it was a vacation or it was a, a three days uh, weekend so some kids were uh, weren't home or were out of town including myself I went to the beach last week it was nice and cool so and it was also clear because of the um, all the fires and everything it was a clear uh, weather and clear air I, I want you guys to remember when you are outside make sure that your face is covered for two reasons now one for the virus protect yourself and two because the air quality out there look outside you smell all the smoke right okay so protect yourself make sure that you're not gonna inhale you're not gonna breathe in all that those all that that ash that is flying in the air so make sure that you stay inside and and uh, whenever you go outside ask mom and dad or wear a mask all the time i love you guys i miss you so much Thank you for being a part of another program. I hope that God blesses you and protects you every day until we meet again. I'll see you next week on another Kids Connection program. Thanks for joining us. Bye-bye. Do you guys have any chores at home? When I was a kid, my job was to dust. I did not like it because it was this gigantic task. And I didn't have this cool Swiffer stick when I was a kid. Dusting isn't so bad anymore since they invented this. I had to go around and take a damp cloth all over every surface and be careful not to break anything. I had to move everything. But now this just gets inside all of the crevices and you don't have to pick anything up as much. Uh, but I can't remember my attitude. What kind of attitude did I have when I hated dusting? I mean, I did it uh, because I had to do it. I, you know, sometimes as an adult, I'm, I don't have the greatest attitude. Like when my dog pees somewhere, I don't usually have a great attitude about, oh, I'll go clean it up. You know, it's not, that's not usually how I react. How's your attitude when you have to do some things? Dylan made an animation for us. Hi guys, I'm going to show you what this guy's attitude looks like when he does chores.
Come on, I don't want to do chores. See? How do you think he felt? Now I'm going to show you him washing the clothes. No, I hate washing the clothes. Okay, the clothes are done. I don't have any more chores. I can go watch TV. Yay. Wait a second, you have one more chore. Go take out the trash. No, I don't want to be doomed to a life of chores. Do you want to get spanked? Okay, fine, I'll do my chores. At least I can watch TV after. No, you can't because your mom actually said you have 12 quintillion 345 quadrillion 678 trillion 900 billion 987 million 654,321 more chores. Aww. Maybe you guys feel like that, that your chores never end. But how do, do you think it matters to God if we work hard or not? Today we're going to learn about Ruth and her willingness to work hard and how she was rewarded because of that. So if you remember what happened last week, it was a story of how Naomi had, um, her husband died, her two sons died, so there were three widows. And then it was a story of how Ruth wanted to not leave Naomi's side. Orpa didn't want to leave her either, but Naomi said, I have nothing for you. You're better off to stay home in Moab. But Ruth didn't want to leave Naomi and Orpa, she left. Uh, Ruth, uh, Naomi told her to leave and she also told Ruth to leave, but Ruth said, I will not leave you. So Ruth took a huge chance being a Moabite into the land of Judah because in the country of Moab, they didn't worship the one true God like they did in Judah. So they don't accept foreigners quite as easily. So this is a story on acceptance for us also to learn in the story of Ruth. So they end up in Judah. Now, as a widow, you can't own anything your husband owns. So for example, Naomi had a husband named Elimelech. All of his property in Judah, she can't own it even though she's his wife. They're gonna end up being beggars unless they have somebody who can save them. So let's, let's tell the story. So Ruth and Naomi go back to Judah in the beginning of the barley harvest. Here they are being greeted by friends that Naomi knew, but they're not very happy because they have nothing. So one day, Ruth said to Naomi, let me go out into the harvest fields to pick up stalks of grain left behind by anyone who is kind enough to let me do it. So back in those days, the men would go and cut down the wheat or barley in this case, and anyone, anything that was left behind that they missed in a hurry, somebody could come and get. So that's what um, Ruth wanted to go do. So Ruth would go pick up what was left. So that way, Ruth and Naomi would have some food to eat. The field Naomi was in was owned by a man named Boaz. He was a wealthy relative of Elimelech. Remember, Elimelech was Naomi's husband who died. While she was gathering grain, Boaz arrived and he greeted the workers and he said, the Lord be with you. And they all replied, the Lord bless you. Boaz was a kind man who loved the Lord. He wanted to please God with his life. Then Boaz noticed Ruth and asked his worker, who's that young woman over there? One of the workers replied, she's the young woman from Moab who came with Naomi. Boaz noticed how hard she worked. So he walked over to hordes her and said, when you are looking for food, always come to my fields and you will be welcome here. So it was important that women were kept safe, especially working in big fields with a lot of men that are strangers, especially a foreigner woman who's a Moab, from Moab. So she wasn't going to be treated as, with as much respect as the people from Judah. So it wasn't exactly safe for her to be out in the field, especially if she visited multiple fields. So Boaz wanted to keep her safe. That was very kind of him. 
and when you are thirsty, help yourself to the water from my well. Ruth fell at his feet and thanked him warmly. What have I done to deserve such kindness? Boaz replied, It was so kind of you to stay with Naomi when you could have stayed in Moab with your mother and father after your husband died. I know it must be hard to live here where you know no one. I hope the Lord blesses you for being so kind. So Boaz recognized and was very impressed by Ruth's loyalty to Naomi, that she didn't leave her when Naomi was giving her the opportunity to go, but that she stuck by her because that was the custom to do in their culture. Traditionally, you don't leave your mother-in-law. And so she didn't. And then also Boaz noticed how hard she worked and she did it humbly and with a good attitude because that's, that's all she could do. At mealtime, Boaz called to her to come eat with his workers. Boaz gave her some roasted grain to eat until she was full. She was very hungry because they didn't have any food. Ruth gathered grain in the field until the evening. She took it back to the city to show Naomi. She also gave her what food she had left over from lunch. Her mother-in-law was pleased and asked her where she worked. She told Naomi about Boaz and his kindness. Naomi said to her, May Boaz be blessed by the Lord for his kindness. That man is a close relative of ours, one of our family redeemers. All right, so the Bible uses this word, kinsman redeemer. Now, this is the exciting part because this story in Ruth parallels the story of Jesus. So you guys know what parallel lines are, right? They're side by side, not touching, but they are moving along towards the same direction, right? So there's a lot of parallel stories in the Old Testament that help us understand Jesus in the New Testament, especially if you were Jewish. A kinsman is a relative of yours. So a cousin, an uncle, um, now, in Naomi's family, she didn't have anybody else, except she was part of a Limelech's family, and this Boaz was her, her relative through a Limelech. So he is her kinsman. Now, remember, in the Bible times, women couldn't own anything. So even though Naomi had property from a Limelech, she couldn't own it because she was a woman. So now the only person who could redeem her, who could save her, would be her kinsman, a relative. So it turns out to be Boaz. And Boaz is the redeemer because he saves Naomi and Ruth from their circumstance. This is the great part, guys. Take your Bibles. Turn to Matthew 1. Okay, Matthew chapter 1 tells us the ancestry line of Jesus, which we call the genealogy. The genealogy of Jesus. Jesus comes through the bloodline of the famous King David, who was the greatest king in all of Judah. Guess who David's great-grandmother was? It was Ruth. This story of Ruth shows her faithfulness and loyalty in order to be a great grandmother so that David comes through her bloodline. Later, Jesus comes through that same bloodline. Without Boaz as her redeemer, her bloodline would have been wiped out of history. She would have died an old beggar. She would have not been saved. This is exactly what Jesus does for us. This is the parallel story. We need somebody to save us. Ruth and Naomi needed somebody to save them. But it wasn't just Naomi who was from Judah. It was also a stranger from Moab. Jesus accepts everyone just as Boaz did. did. And Jesus saves us so we can have our inheritance. Do you know what our inheritance is? It's heaven! Jesus is giving us our inheritance and Boaz was able to give Ruth her inheritance because he was the man who could buy the property that belonged to their family. These are incredible 
parallels that lead us to Jesus' story. It's not in the Bible by mistake. The story of Ruth is is there for us to know that we have our Redeemer. We get our inheritance through understanding we're sinful and we need a Savior who can save us. Okay, next guys, we're going to Galatians 4, 4. But when the time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive the full rights of sons our inheritance through Jesus Christ. So Boaz couldn't forgive Ruth's sins, but Jesus forgives all of our sins. Now go to Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. We need a savior. We cannot go to heaven on our own by doing good things because we're sinful. Our sins can be forgiven because Jesus paid the price for us. In the story of Ruth, Boaz paid the price for her properties. Jesus paid the price with his death, but that he's alive and we will be too with him forever. We, we are forgiven of our sins. And because of that, we do good things. So your project for this week is to find something to eat with barley in it. Now, barley is much like wheat, except wheat is typically ground up into flour. Now, the barley looks much like these little wheat berries. So I th I've showed you this before. So these little tight little like berries are covered by a shaft which then has to be separated to get this little tiny berry out but in when it's barley it's called a pearl so a pearl barley or a wheat berry you can find bags of pearl barley like rice and you can cook it very similarly to rice and often barley is put in soups You can make bread. And a salad. So it would be really cool if you guys planned a day where you could cook up something with barley and you eat a whole meal as a family together. I know everybody's schedules are all over the place. So plan a day where you're going to be together, have this barley meal together, and talk about the story of Ruth and how it parallels the story of Jesus from what you learned in the lesson today. Jesus is our Redeemer. Bow your heads in prayer with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for loving us so much that you died in order to save us because we are sinners and we thank you for your forgiveness. Um, please continue to be with us so that our faith grows and we take these stories and learn from them and that they can shape our lives to know that you are always there for us. You are always going to save us as long as we ask for your forgiveness and we, we believe in you, Lord. Please be with these children throughout the week and their families so that their lives may be blessed. And Thank you for the inheritance you have given us, for redeeming us of our sins. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. We have eternal life, guys, so go have a good week and remember that our suffering here on earth is nothing compared to our inheritance. The glory God will reveal to us later. That's in Romans 8.18. Goodbye.